Good evening. Uh, I know that uh, I'm coming to you a little bit early and at the same time a little bit late. So I said 515, but technology is not an easy thing for Miss Barbara to do. However, lessons and crafts are. So I know that you're sitting at home and you probably have gotten the phone call by now. So are we liking staying at home all day? Okay, here's an idea. Raise your hand if you love staying at home all day. <laughs> you should see my kids behind you. Raise your hand if you cannot wait to go back to school and see your friends. Ah, at least Tobias raised his hands for that one. I think it's okay that you feel both of those things because you might be having fun at home. You could sleep in and you're probably eating way more than you would at school. But you're probably also missing your friends and your teachers and gym class and music class if you have music class. Um, so I know that it's it can be hard, but it also can be easy too. And then you probably have heard that it's going to be April. April before you go back to school. So... We'll have to think on that. We'll have to pray on that and, and make sure that we're feeling okay inside. So tonight, um, our uh, lesson was always going to be about the Last Supper. So I thought I would do it from here. So um, I see that one of my little... There we go. Okay. So here we are at the Last Supper. Here we go. All of our friends are there. Do you remember what the friends were called? The Disciples. The disciples were at the table. So let's start with our Bible verse first. Okay, you can uh, you can read along with me, okay? On the first day of the festival of the unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I'm going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to the man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So that's a lot of big words, if you're little, but I know the older ones, you probably have heard that before. You probably heard that at church. So before we talk about doing it at church, I do want to read to you a little bit, a little bit easier story. So before they eat, before you eat, what do you do? Say you say a prayer, but what do you do before you say the prayer? Maybe before you come to the, hopefully before you come to the table, especially with all the germs right now, what do we do? Wash our hands. We do wash our hands. Now I'm going to tell you about something, and hopefully they wash their hands first, but this is about washing something else before we're eating. It's very interesting, so we'll have to figure out why you think they do that. Jesus and his disciples gathered together for a special Passover meal. Jesus knew he would be leaving them soon. After supper, Jesus removed his outer clothing. He wrapped a towel around his waist. Then he filled a bowl with water. Jesus washed and dried the disciples' feet one by one. When it was Peter's turn, he said to Jesus, Lord, you should never wash my feet. Jesus answered, I must wash your feet for you to be part of my kingdom. Then he said to them all, As I have washed your feet, you must wash each other's feet. By doing this, Jesus showed his friends how to love and serve each other. Now, the feet are clean and the hands are clean. And he says, Jesus told them, One of you will turn against me tonight. His disciples were shocked and said, We would never do that. Who will turn against you? Don asked. The one I gave this piece of bread to, said Jesus. He handed it to Judas and said, do what you must. G Judas quickly left.
Then Jesus did something else. He picked up a loaf of bread and blessed it. Then he broke it into pieces. He gave the bread to his disciples to eat. And Jesus said, this bread is my body. Every time you do this, think of me. In the same way, he took a cup of wine and blessed it. He gave it to the disciples to drink. This is my blood. It is poured out to forgive the sins of many. The time has come for me to go away. Where I am going, you cannot go yet. I am going to heaven to prepare a wonderful new home for you, but I will return to you soon. At first you will be very sad, but don't be frightened. Soon you will understand, and you will be filled with joy. So the story continues, and we will continue the story uh, later on at church and on Wednesday nights. But I wanted to um, I wanted to make sure that you understood. So they wash the feet. Now that seems kind of weird. You wash your feet probably when you are taking a shower or you're in the bathtub. But before you eat, you guys don't go around washing each other's feet, do you? Who wants to wash their brother's feet? I do. Who wants to wash their sister's feet? Me. How about mom's feet? Me. How about dad's feet? Me. And last time we asked, remember, who wants to wash Mr. Dwayne's feet? Me. <laughs> so they wash their feet. Think of their feet. They didn't wear shoes like we do, shoes and socks. They would have walked around with sandals. Have you ever worn flip-flops outside and played in the dirt? And you looked at your feet? They get pretty, pretty filthy. So by washing it, they were getting ready to come to something that was very special. And by Jesus doing the washing, he was saying, I'm going to serve you. And now you're going to serve others. I'm showing you what to do. Jesus was showing him, showing them what to do. Okay. So have you been, I know you've been to church, but have you been to church and done communion? Have you ever taken communion? At our church, the children uh, take communion with the adults. I don't know if you go to a different church. Maybe your mom or dad says, nope, we're not ready for you to do it yet. You're not quite old enough. Or maybe if you go to a special church, you have to go through a certain class before you take communion. But at our church, all the people are welcome to take. So you watch the pastor and he stands up in the front and he takes the bread. You know what he does? And he, and he says some prayers and he, and he reads what I read. And then he breaks it. Why do you think he breaks the bread? Because you could just eat it like this. Couldn't you? Or you, or you could just time. you could just you could just pull it off and eat it. Or and you think, okay, well he was gonna serve other people. Is that how mom and dad do it? Because I wanna be at your house if that's how mom and dad serve bread, they go and give it to bread. You could just cut it with a knife, right? I wonder why Jesus did that. Do you remember what his words were? It says, My body broken for you. Because what's gonna come up in the Easter story in the next couple of days? His body is going to be broken. Do you remember that part? When he dies for us on the cross and it's nailed, his body is broken. His body is taken apart. Okay? Not literally, but he dies. Therefore, he is separated from his body. So that's what it is. Now, the preacher then, usually after they break the bread and they talk about that, they read some more. And then they pour the wine into the cup. Do that. So why do you think that he poured it into the cup like that? Yeah, I mean, he could have he could have stuck a straw in there. He could have just drank it like it was. Why do you think he poured it into a cup? Because they need to share it. So they can share it. That's a good idea. But do you remember from the scripture when he says, this is my blood poured out for many. Think again, a couple of days from now, in the Easter story, his blood is going to come out and he's going to die. And so... His blood is going to be shed. That's another fancy word for he's going to die. But we know what? We know that Christ will come again, don't we? So we know not to be sad. They didn't know to not to. He tried to tell them. He said, don't be sad. And I think maybe they tried, but they're like, no, no, it's not going to be me. Now, some of you older ones who remember, remember he said, one of you will betray me. Who remembers who it was that betrays him? It's going to be the last disciple we come up here. So, Grace, if you'll come over here. Let's see if we can remember the 12 disciples. Now, I know some of you remember them. All right, let's see. The first disciple is James. Do you remember James? Okay. Disciple number two, John. Disciple number three, Andrew. Disciple number four, Philip. Disciple number five. Simon, disciple number six, Peter. Peter was the rock. That's what Jesus called him. I ran number seven. I forgot, I forgot the number. So, oh, 
we already did a James, but this is James the Less. Remember why that was? Remember, there were two James, and we figured one is probably younger than the other one. Yeah, I've already forgot my number, so we're going to go. The next one is Bartholomew. Say that as a hard word. Bartholomew. That's a hard word. Yeah. Then, Thomas is telling me this is the ninth one. Matthew. Let's see who disciple number 10 is. Thaddeus. That is another hard, num a hard name. Say Thaddeus. Thaddeus. It has a T. It does have a T. <gasps> There's another name we know. Disciple Thomas. Thomas was the doubter. We'll talk about that later in church too. <gasps> and our last disciple was in fact the one that betrayed Jesus. His name is Judas. Judas is the one that betrayed him. All right. So we see all of our little people here. You can come back over, Gracie, so we can see our people at the see our people at the table. They sat around the table and they ate with him. So he washed their feet, he broke the bread, and he poured the wine. Now odds are they probably had some other food too. They might have had might have had some grapes or maybe some cheese or some lentils or vegetables or something. And they sat around the table. Now, can you imagine sitting at your at your kitchen table with your family? And before you eat, mom says, one of you is going to be in big trouble tonight. And I'm looking at mine thinking that same thing. Stop. One of you is going to be in super big trouble tonight. Would you be able to enjoy your meal? You think you might be eating a little slowly, a little more carefully going, oh, is it me? Am I going to get in trouble? Is it my brother? So I have a feeling that they were all sitting around with Jesus and they were worried. They were not only worried about who was going to betray them, but he told them. What did he tell them? He said, I'm not going to be with you anymore. And you're not going to understand right now. And they didn't. They couldn't possibly have understood what was going to happen coming up. But Jesus was there and he said, do not be afraid. And that's what we want to do. So when we go to Communion Sundays and when we're talking about it now, when you hear the story of the Last Supper, do not be afraid. Okay, because Christ comes again and he is always, always with us. I wanted to share this little thing with you because the pastor gave it to each of the kids at our church. Isn't that the cutest little thing? It's a little communion cup and it's, and it's made out of special wood and it's from the Holy Land and he brought those back and each of my children has one. I don't let them use it for communion because they're too pretty, but um, it, that's probably a lot of what the cup would have looked like back in Jesus's time. Come on, let's go over there. Sorry, this is what it's like to teach while you have children at home. Um, this is a lot, it would have been wooden. It probably would not have been made out of Legos, like the ones I have here. And it probably wouldn't have been made out of glass. It probably been, would have been a wooden one. Okay, so who was paying attention? You ready for some quizzes? All right, come back up here, Gracie, for our quiz tonight. Okay, for one, now, if you've got a pencil or a paper or pull out your phone with your calculator, and I have a feeling I know who's going to give the most points. They'll probably text me later, so let's find out. So for 100 points, in the category of bread, Jesus said, I am the bread of what? Uh, the bread of life. Did you get life? He said, I am the bread of life. Is Jesus really bread? No. No, Jesus is not really bread. He was saying that Jesus, he is what we need to sustain life. Okay, you ready? All right. In the category of bread for 200 points. In the parable of the unleavened bread, what ingredient gives the dough life much like God? <laughs> Thank you to my boys. All right. Does anybody remember? It's an ingredient that goes into the bread. Are we ready? Pizza. <laughs> Is that pizza? <laughs> Yeast. Yeast. Yeast does go into pizza, though. That does make it, it makes it rise up and it makes it give life. All right. Good job if you got that one because that one's a tricky one. All right, then the category of bread for 300 points. What does Jesus say the bread represents at the Last Supper? Remember, we just talked about it. What does the bread represent? Do we remember? Pizza. It does not mean pizza. <laughs> Oops. His body. His body. Remember how we talked about his body would be broken. His body would die. Okay. If you got that, good job. 400 points. Can we do it? Bread for 400 points. God sent birds to feed this man bread from their beaks. Think back. And if you were watching my Sunday school lesson that I did on Sunday, you should know this answer. We ready? 
Elijah! Oh, Gracie's very proud that she remembered that. Good job, Gracie. We'll give her a sticker later. All right. For the most points. For 500 points, this one might be a hard one. Think, think, think. This bread-like substance fell down from the heavens to feed the Israelites as they wandered the desert. Are the birds? No, it was not birds that fell from the sky. This was a bread-like substance. Anybody? Apple. Anybody? Michael? I wonder if Michael knows it. Let's see. Manna. Hopefully, Michael said manna. All right. Add up your points for the bread column, and we're going to move on to the wine column. All right. Wine for 100 points. What fruit is wine made from? Joy. It's made from joy? I would think that a lot of parents would agree with that. But I'm looking for an actual fruit. And the fruit is what, Thomas? Grapes. Grapes. Wine is made from grapes. Now, before all of you technical people get out there, yes, I have heard of wine being made from like apples and apricots and stuff. But for our, our viewing uh, easiness tonight, grapes. All right. Wine for 200. What did Jesus compare the wine to during the Last Supper? What did he compare it to? We just read about it. Thomas? His blood. His blood, correct. Correct. There we go. All right. Are we ready for the next one? Yes. 300 points. It's getting harder. In the parable of the vine, what part of the plant is supposed to be the vine? Oh, this one might be a little tricky. In the parable of the vine, what part of the plant Pizza. is supposed to be the vine? What is it supposed to represent? It represents... Pancakes. Not pancakes. Jesus. It represents Jesus. Remember, he said, I am the vine and you are the branches. And with me, you will bear much fruit. All right. Let's go on for 400. When Jesus turned water into wine, it was his what miracle? I'm looking for a number. What miracle was, was it when Jesus turned water into wine? Um, Do you remember... Why? Well, Tobias, that was a lucky guess and correct. It was, in fact, his first miracle. It was the number one miracle. Good job. I, I did it. You did it, yes. Okay. For our last question, for the most points, when he changed that water into wine, it was at a what in Cana? There was an event in Cana that he attended with his mother. Anybody remember? I bet Michael knows. Hopefully Michael's getting it. Thomas, you remember? Uh, the wedding? It was, in fact, a wedding. Good job to all of you if you got those answers. And, and also, I got one. Okay, go sit over there. <laughs> Next one, have it. Thank you. There's no real prize. The real prize of knowing the answer to these questions is just that you know a little bit more about Jesus and a little bit more about the Bible. There's no real prizes there. Although, sometimes in class, I give you what? Sometimes you get a lollipop. Okay, so we've talked about the bread. We've talked about the wine. Now, when we're at church, I used to do a craft. And I was racking my brain and racking my brain about a craft. And I thought, well, I'm not really sure what that is. So, what I was thinking is, if you have bread uh, for dinner tonight or tomorrow night or even the night after that, I want you to tell mom or dad or grandma whoever or sister, whoever's at the table with you, what the bread means okay and maybe if you ask really really nice mom or grandma or, or dad or somebody will make you some grape juice that you can tell them and everybody else at the table what the grape juice was supposed to be now if you are smaller you can draw a picture of what you think this is my version of the last supper it's got little people and and we've got some legos yes batman's at the last supper he um he needs to be there um so this is kind of a fun thing you could do this with you could make your own you could make your own lego set or if you have little doll babies or little uh, stuffed animals you can make a big one with a table like this and stuffed animals if you wanted well, to if animals. you do one of these please take a picture and send it to me i would love to see how you do it i'd love if you got gi joe do they make gi joes anymore if you got gi joes you could you could make your own i would love to see what you make or you could draw individual little people on popsicle sticks and make it so if you make one please send it to miss barbara because i definitely want to see it now at our church 
we are going to continue to make cards. And I told you Sunday that you can make some cards. And I know I told my Monday also you can make some cards. I The addresses are being sent to your parents of where those can go to. So continue to make cards. Tell um, we're, we're sending them to people who are in nursing homes or maybe who live by themselves. And they don't have as many people at home as you do. Um, and I know maybe it's, sometimes it's fun to have that many people and sometimes it's not fun. But for them, it's all the time. Nobody extra. So let's send them a little love. Uh, so continue to make your cards. Uh, mom and dads, check emails from our church. Um, check your email for addresses. If you don't go to our church, I bet you that you will be easy for you to find a nursing home. Maybe call ahead and make sure they're accepting mail. Um, and, and, and you can write it to a resident, just say a resident to a resident, um, from a child, uh, on, on the address. And I'm pretty sure they've got, but I would call first and make sure they are accepting them. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you, Gracie, zoom over here, is this painting. Does anybody, any of my smarty, smarty kids, do they know who, who painted, oh, it's kind of down there. Who painted this painting? <laughs> mm, who was that? Leonardo da Vinci he was a very very famous painter and I love the way that he made it because did you notice that they're all sitting on the back side of the table nobody's sitting on the front so you can see everybody now I want you to look closely Gracie can't zoom in because then she can't zoom back out but if you look right here this person here has a knife in their hand who do you think has the knife who do you think this is that would be Judas. Judas would be betrayed. Now, Judas is not actually going to do the stabbing. He's not actually going to do it. But it's a representation of the fact that he is going to do it. And there's there's Jesus in the middle. And as you can see, their, their meal there. Okay, so I just want you to see that. Because a lot of times when people say the Last Supper, that might be something that, that they're talking about and that they're thinking about in their mind. So hopefully you got um, some good information from tonight's lesson. It's not the same. I do miss you guys a lot. Even though sometimes you're wild, I do miss you. I am going to continue to do some of these videos and things for you. And I hope that you enjoy them. And I hope you listen. And I hope you go home. Well, you are home. I hope you go back and maybe read the story or tell the story to a sibling or to your parent. Or find your, find your children's Bible and, and find the story in there. And read it again so that you don't forget. So I hope that you're watching and that I hope you'll come back and watch again and again. I will do this next Wednesday and I will do it Sunday and probably several other times from then. So in the meantime, what I want to tell you to do, wash your hands, be nice to your siblings, be nice to your parents. We're all frazzled. Be kind to each other and stay well. Okay. Miss Barbara loves you.